Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, hello there, this is Cool Dude Clem, or School Dude Clem, as some of you think I say. Anyway, welcome to the first video in a new series about building a solid state Tesla coil. Now, I hope by the end of the series, I'm going to have something like this. Of course, there's no guarantee that what I'm building is going to work, but we'll see. Oh, if you're wondering about the hat, well, my hair is so bad at the moment, it's really just not worth showing on the camera. And also, if you hear a little bit of background noise, well, that's because I've got the fan on full blast, because it's been about 91 degrees today, which is the hottest day so far, and it's probably going to get even hotter than that later on. But, anyway... Let's get on with the thing. Right then, well, if you've been doing electronic projects, even if you're just starting out in electronic projects, you probably know that you're not going to get very far if you don't have some kind of power supply. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be making the power supply for the primary circuit, which is, you know, the primary coil and the MOSFET, and obviously the high voltage part, and the low voltage part, the control circuitry and stuff like that. Okay, so I've switched over to the hands-free microphone because it's very hard to do a video holding the microphone. I need like three hands for doing that, so yeah. So anyway, what we're going to do first is determine the primary and secondary of the transformer. So we'll start with this one. Now, I already know which is the primary and the secondary, but... This is how you find out. We've got two connections there, and we've got four connections there. Now I know for a fact that this transformer has two secondaries, which are connected here. This is where one of the secondaries is connected. These two pins here, and these two pins here are where the other secondary are. I'm going to be using both secondaries on this transformer, and you'll see why in just a minute. And this side, with the just two connections on it, is the primary. And if you're still not sure, there's a way you can find out. What you do, you get your multimeter, set onto the ohms scale, and we measure each coil. So, uh, let's see what this one is. It is 97 ohms. And on this side, let's see what we got here. So a little bit of a fidgety connection here. These probes do not connect very well. They're almost useless, these probes. So maybe that's a settle, and that's 1.4 ohms. Let's see what this side is. That will just stay on there. Try not to short anything out. That says about one ohm. Okay, so the secondaries on this transformer aren't completely matched, but it's not going to be too much of a problem. So anyway, as this coil here has a generally higher impedance than these coils, we can determine that this is the primary, and these down here are the secondaries. Of course, generally on these bigger transformers, the windings are going to be of a lower impedance, so that's just something to keep in mind. So if we measure the primary of this one, hopefully my hands aren't getting in the way. I get my meter on here good. I know which is the primary and the secondary on this transformer because I've used this many times before. You can see the primary, when it just let itself get itself settled. It's 2.6 ohms. And measure these ones here. It would just connect. It's only about 0.01 ohms. Of course, from pincers that low, you can't really rely on your multimeter, but you can still see that the primary of this one has a higher impedance than the secondary. So, let's wire some stuff up. For now, 
this is the transformer I'm going to use. So I'm going to plug this in and let's see what voltages we get. Okay, I've made my professionally safe connection right there. Going to the transformer. So let's plug this in and take some measurements. This whole thing is live now, so I've got to be very careful. I don't electrocute myself. Let's take a reading of the voltages. Of course, it would help if I press the right button to turn the meter on. Be on AC, so let's see what the voltage going in is. Okay. We've got 243 volts going in. Oh, if you're wondering what this little green thing that looks like a capacitor is on the transformer, that's an inrush limiter. You see those on a lot of power supplies, mostly on switch mode supplies, but that's just so we don't get a huge inrush when these capacitors get charged up. So, let's see what our output voltage is. 1.5 volts, that can't be right, surely. Oh, that looks more like it. 78 volts. So now we know what's going on. Let's make that into a power supply. Better unplug it first. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the transformer to this thing, which is a rectifier. AC goes in one side, DC comes out the other. We've got positive marked on this terminal here. I can see a little AC symbol on that terminal there. So as this one's the positive terminal, and this one's one of the AC terminals. The other AC terminal will be there. And the negative terminal will be there. Right, so we've got the rectifier hooked up to the transformer. This is just a temporary connection, so those wires are not soldered on because, you know, I want to be able to swap out different transformers. Maybe I should put some kind of clips on the ends of those wires. So now, we've got to hook up our two capacitors. And I'm building this, and... Uh, what we're actually building is this part of the circuit right here. There's the rectifier. In the original circuit, whoever made this, it was connected to a variac, but I'm just going to connect that to different transformers. So now we've got to put in our two filter capacitors. Okay, I'm going to just shoot this bit again because the microphone was off, so I was just going... And you couldn't hear a word I was saying. So, anyway, built the first part of the power supply. Now I've got slightly more filtering than in the schematic because I don't have a couple of 220 microfarad capacitors. This one's a 330, and this one's a 220. But everything's wired up, and I've already tested this and I know it works, and of course, when I shot that footage, the microphone was off. Well, one thing I will say, when you're working with electrolytic capacitors, and I know a lot of you already know this, but you must remember they're polarized. They have a negative and a positive. So look for a little black dot, like you can see here, or a stripe on the side of the capacitor, and that will tell you which is a negative. If you plug them in the wrong way, they'll blow up. Also, as you can see, I've got no regard for my own safety, and I've just put the wire straight into my meter there, so let's plug this in. And there we go, it's working beautifully. We've got 109 volts DC. Some of you might be wondering, what's the deal with that? The output of the transformer was like 70-something volts, so how come we've got 109 volts now? Well, you've got to remember, when AC, you know, it's changing direction all the time, it's going up and down, and when you're measuring AC, it's the average voltage that you see on the meter, not the peak voltage. When we rectify AC to DC, we get the peak voltage, which is, in this case, 109 volts. Also, you might be wondering why there's a 220K resistor connected across the capacitors. That's so, when I unplug it, it will bleed the voltage off, so in a couple of minutes or so, it'll be safe to touch. So I know that's working. I'm going to wait for this to go back to zero and get on with the next part of the supply. Okay then, we've got one power supply built. It's time to build the other one. This one is going to be a little bit more intricate because it's a regulated supply. 
which is going to be run off this transformer. And as you can see, I've already started. I've put a couple of wires onto the primary so this transformer can be plugged in. And I'm going to connect this up in a little bit of a different way because instead of using a four diode rectifier or one of those little blocks with the four diodes in it, I'm going to use just two diodes because this transformer has two secondaries and I can wire this up like a center touch transformer. Now the end of one of the secondaries is here and the beginning of the other secondary is there. So I can just connect those two together. Now I get one diode, put that on like that and the other diode will go on there like that. Right, okay, here's the transformer with the diodes on it. I've connected these two pins together, which, if you remember, was the end of one of the secondaries and the beginning of the other secondary. So that's being used as the center tap and also being used as the ground wire. I also have this connected to the case of the transformer, so the case of the transformer is grounded. And the two diodes, this one is connected to this end of this secondary here, and it's going this way, because the stripe is right there. And I've just noticed that I've put this diode in the wrong way. That should also be facing that way, so I'm just going to go and correct that little error. If I turn this on right now, I would have produced smoke-emitting diodes. You might have heard of lead-emitting diodes. These are smoke-emitting diodes. Okay, they're no longer smoke-emitting diodes. So, the back of the diode is connected to the transformer. The front of the two diodes are connected to this wire, which is our positive. Let's make sure that's nice and secure. So, if I was to put a small capacitor across that, we can actually measure the output voltage. Alright, so I'm going to plug this in, and let's see what we get. Smoke test! Did you hear me fart? So we've got our transformer plugged in and a little capacitor. Let's see what the voltage is across that capacitor. And it is 26.3 volts. And that's a 50 volt capacitor, so that's plenty of headroom. So now I've got to work on this part of the circuit here, which is going to take that 26 volts and Step it down even further to 12 volts and 5 volts to work the gate drive and the logic. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Right, okay. Here's the built power supply for the gate drive and the logic. I think it's turned out rather well. It looks nice and clean on this side, although there's a lot of wasted board. And on the other side is my shocking soldering. So let's see if this works. Alright, so I'll just go plug this in. When I can find the plug, there's a sitting a whole bunch of stuff. Let's put this in. Alright. It's in. Nothing's released any magic smoke. That's always a good sign. Okay, so I'm going to connect the meter to a ground. So let's see what voltages are coming out of this. Let's see what we got right here. Okay, we've got 12.05 volts coming out of that wire. So, so far so good. Let's see what we've got coming out of this wire. Should be about 5 volts. Oh yes. And I've got a couple of cans in my way. So I'd say this is working 100% successfully. Let's just take a little look at the voltage going in. And that should still be around like 20 or something. Yeah, we've got 25 volts coming in. And 12 volts and 5 volts going out. So, all in all, this has been a 100% success so far. That's both the power supplies done and they both work. Of course, I am going to put voltage, I mean, heat sinks on these voltage regulators. I'm going to put voltage regulators on these heat sinks. And of course, this isn't the only transformer I'm going to use for the primary circuit. I'm going to try a whole bunch of different transformers for different test voltages to test the coil on. But anyway, the next video I think I'll get on with the gate drive circuit, so until next time, goodbye.